This is a quick intro to um, radian measure. Um, in class, I talked about the motivation for this, that in degrees, we have a relatively nice relationship. Uh, if you're on a circle and you're sectioning out some part of that circle, if this is theta and that's the r and that's the radius r and then the arc length how much of the crust of the pizza you get is s then we found out that the how much of the crust of the pizza is you have to know theta and you have to know r and the bigger r gets the bigger s is going to get the bigger theta gets the bigger s is going to get but then you have this annoying factor of pi over 180 I'll put a little degrees there to remind us that that's a degree. And the purpose of radians is to get rid of that factor, or that's one of the many purposes of radians. Uh, the more you go in mathematics, the more and more and more radians become very, very natural, especially in calculus, I must say. So, um, in radians, what we're going to do is we're going to redefine how we measure theta to make this be just s equals r theta, as pretty as it can possibly be. That's as simple as you can get, given that s is still supposed to depend on both these variables. It's just the product of the two. And how is that going to work? We're just going to re rejigger that a little bit. It says that one way to measure the radian measure of an angle is actually focus instead on the crust of the pizza. Suppose somebody draws a picture like this. Don't focus immediately on the theta. Say, suppose I, I happen to know how much of the crust of the pizza there is. Take that and divide it by the radius. And that's really the, the definition of, in principle, how to measure an angle in a circle in radians. Now that's not how we're going to measure it practically a lot of the time because we might already know the degree measure and so we're going to do it as a conversion problem. But let me do it at least once in that way. Um, and so that's going to be, suppose I have a circle of radius 10. Uh, I, actually I'll do, I'll do two problems on the circle of radius 10. Suppose I have a circle of radius 10 and then I say that I've got exactly half that circle. And I want to know that angle theta in radians. Well, here's one way to do that. Is if we can figure out what our s is, given that we have r equals 10 and, we have e, and if we had s, then we can figure out theta. So s is going to be half of the circumference. So 1 half times 2 pi times 10 those are going to cancel. So s is 10 pi. And then theta is what we do is we take s and we divide by r. We don't really care much about how much pizza we have, or how much crust we have. We, we want to figure out how much crust do we have given that it's a, a radius 10 pizza. And we get pi. And pi's show up a lot in radian measure. They don't show up for every radian measure, but they show up a lot for simple and nice angles. They're going to show up in every single one of our standard simple, ang simple angles. Um, so let me show you a variation of this. Suppose I had given, suppose somebody's saying, I don't have a 10-inch pizza, 10-inch radius pizza. I have like a 3-inch radius pizza. But again, I take half that pizza and I want to know how much that theta is. Well, it really should be the same. The angle here shouldn't depend on the scale I choose for the picture. I should have been able to cover that up, and it, the r equals 10, and really been able to say it's the same angle. Similarly here, if r equals 3, then I should get the same answer. Well, you do, because you, you still get half the circumference. I'll write it out this time. And so that's 1 half times 2 pi times 3. So that's 3 pi. And so s over r, theta, is s over r. And that's 3 pi. The 3's cancel, just like the 10's cancel. And I get pi. And that's a really crucial thing. s over r isn't going to depend on how big the, the circle is. 
because whenever I scale up r, s is going to scale up just, just the same way. And so for half a circle, it's going to be pi. So this really has nothing to do with 10-inch pizzas or 3-inch pizzas. It has to do with what's the radian measure of half a circle, or in other words, 180 degrees. And so that's a really important thing, is in a minute, we're going we're gonna to have a more efficient way to do this in a lot of problems. This is one way you have to do it sometimes, certainly. Um, it's just to know that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. Okay, and so you might have noticed, you probably didn't, I haven't actually been writing the word radians here. And radians are such a natural unit that you can say pi radians, but if you just say to somebody that the angle is pi, and you don't put a little degree symbol, people are going to assume you mean radians, especially mathematicians and, and, and like physicists and such, because it's absolutely the most natural me way to measure angle. So let me do one more example in this line, and then I'm going to switch to the just unit conversion mode. Suppose I have, um, an, again, a circle, and maybe the radius is 7, and I have, um, like, let's say this is 5. So s equals 5. Uh, I know my s's and my 5's don't look very simple different. Let me try and make that really curly and that really blocky. There we go. S equals 5 and R equals 7. And I want to know theta. It's very simple. It's S over R, which is 5 sevenths, which is about, I don't know, 0.7 something. We're done. That's really as simple as it gets. To figure out the theta in radian measure, so again, I could put radians here but the reason I don't usually is it's a habit people get tend to get out of because people don't usually use the word radian there. But it's five-sevenths of a radian. That's how much angle there, there is subtended there. Okay, so that's sort of the meaning. That's how it, how it kind of emphasizes the meaning of radians, that it's about the relationship of S and theta, S, R, and theta. But as a unit conversion, we just found out in the previous examples, I showed you the basic the key. This is how people usually convert. It's just a new unit. Pi, oops, let's say pi radians equals 180 degrees. So, um, and we saw this kind of secretly on the table that we had in class. So, for example, pi over 2 radians is 90 degrees. Uh, 2 pi radians, that's really, really significant. The 2 pi radians is exactly one revolution. That's another way to measure angles on a circle. How many revolutions are you doing? Well, 360 we know is one revolution, and that's the same as 2 pi radians. Very, very significant. Okay, and you can continue this. You can divide it by 3, divide it by 4, and we'll, we'll start memorizing those simple angles. But if you want to know, what about um, 3.7 radians is how many degrees? Well, we just do it as a unit conversion. We need to multiply by 1. So if pi radians and 180 degrees are the same thing, I'm just going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians. Radians cancel, and I just get 3.7 times 180 degrees over pi, which equals, oh, and of course I didn't do that out. Um, well, I don't want to bore you with waiting while I do that. So, you just go to the calculator for that. Should have should have calculated that in advance, oh well. But you just go ahead and calculate it out. Similarly, uh, 74 degrees, you just rewrite it, and then times pi radians over 180 degrees. So, 74 over 180 pi. Okay, and then just go to calc and get a decimal. Okay, now for some things, you actually want to leave the pi there. You want an exact answer. Since pi comes into all these calculations, it really depends on exactly what you're doing, whether you want a decimal answer. So you'd use the calculator and just plug in all that stuff if you want a decimal answer. Or you could just leave it as 74 pi over 180. And you can probably cancel a 2 out there or something. Um, so we're going to talk about in what situations we want the exact answer like 74 pi over 180, and in what situations do we want a decimal answer? It's more, it's basically like, are we doing kind of a abstract math problem or a, a word problem? Okay, so that should be a good start for doing the homework.